Hello and welcome to Volume 4 of the Community Cast Library. My name is The Sloth Gamer, thank you very much for joining me. In today's volume we have one match. It's a bit of a long one, but I think it's really good, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Please don't forget that uh, I am looking for castable replays, so if you feel like that you've got a, a replay that deserves glorifying on YouTube for the enjoyment of dozens, nearly dozens, of subscribers, then please feel free to chuck it my way either through the uh, Forged Alliance Forever Aeolus chat or email me at the slothgamer at outlook.com. Alright guys, enjoy. Hello and welcome along to a GB and Friends 5 vs 5 on the map Adaptive Diversity. Just before we introduce the players, I'd like to point out that there are two non-GB clan members in this match, and that is Hedges for Team 1 and Cabal for Team 2. We'll call this team on the left Team 1, this team on the right Team 2. Starting off with the players from Team 1 at the top, it's Hedges going white and UEF. Hedges weighing in at 1000 ranking for this one. In the upper mid position, playing in pink, Suchu Sir as Seraphim, it's Google. Google coming in at 1500 in the lower mid position for team one playing as master cyber and race fashioning the color green it's Olympia Olympia coming in at 1200 for this one and in the lower middle lower middle lower position <laughs> it's Foden in teal going as Seraphim Foden coming in at 1500 and lastly for team one in the bottom position Playing in red as Gaon, it's Hot Fog. Hot Fog, a slightly underrated 900 for this match. And starting off for Team 2 in the top position, going in the lighter shade of green as Seraphim. Opening first land, it's Kung Fu Panda. Kung Fu, a 1200 ranking for this match. Second up for Team 2, it's Cabal in yellow, going as Master Cyber Race, who's also opened first land. Uh, Cabal is a 1400 at this time. Thirdly, for Team 2, in purple, as Master Cyber and Race, it's Matthew. Matthew opening first land and marching forward with his com and also coming in at a respectable 1200. And fourthly, for Team 2, playing in Customary Cyan, Customary Master Race Cybran. It is Mr. Overrated, Mr. Whatever he is, Death Squad. Yeah, that person. A hugely inflated 1700. It's almost as big as his ego now. And then lastly for Team 2, playing in shit colored brown. We'll call it dog shit brown. It sounds better. Uh, going UEF, it's Grinder. Grinder, the lowest ranking player for this match, coming in at 800. Uh, also, Grinder coincidentally queuing up a rather huge number of land factories. Has already gone first land, second land, and is now currently simultaneously going third and fourth land. Grinder, what's your eco like now? So, Grinder not currently stalling, but uh, very, very quickly on his way to stalling both power and mass right now. And there we go, stalling both. I'd perhaps be uh, just building one of those factories at a time, where in fact he is now building three at the same time. We have scouts out from Team 1 and Team 2. Olympia with a scout out over Grinder and Death Squad's position. Matthew just bringing his scout to the bottom of the map and starting to work his way over the two Team 1 side and moving up, starting with uh, Hot Fog's position. We have an early bomber out from Olympia as well in the north of the map. One kill so far on that bomber. Not quite sure what he's doing there. He just seems to be uh, meandering and not getting anything away. And we have a bomb away. It's aimed at an engineer. And that T1 bomber picking up its second kill. Cabal moving forward with his commander. As is a few of the other guys, um, Google also moving forward for Team 1, as is Kung Fu Panda for Team 2. Death Squad going into a gun speed upgrade at 4 minutes, just over 4 minutes. Is that the first upgrade of the match? That is the first upgrade of the match thus far. 
Uh, another T1 bomber out from Olympia. I'm not sure if it's the same one. It's still only got two kills. Picking up three and four there. Uh, but Matthew does have interceptors on that T1 bomber. And that won't hamper the expansion of Matthew too much. Oh, and it's going in for a final two kills on engineers from Death Squad. Picking up one of those guys. Not quite a hero bomber of the state, but definitely picking up a worthwhile amount of engineer kills there for Olympia and Team 1 respectively. Or should I say for Olympia and... Uh, never mind. Never mind. I can't get my words out. Cabal pushing forward with some T1 units here and coming across a push from... Google, who immediately pulls back, and then Foden just uh, pushing up, making sure that he forces Cabal back as well. Uh, Cabal already looking here like he's in a little bit of a, a two versus one situation, but then over the top, heading towards the com of Google, Kung Fu Panda sending in some of his own T1 forces for Team 2, and that has definitely moved what was looking like a little bit of pressure on Cabal there away from said person and now Olympia and Google chasing down this raid from Kung Fu Panda which is now turning northward into the expansion and base building of hedges Hot Fog going into a T2 upgrade here at uh, just under 6 minutes a Death Squad completing his gun speed upgrade and going straight into a stealth upgrade and we've also had a, a gun upgrade from Hot Fog and Foden thus far so Hot Fog completing that gun speed upgrade and going straight into the T2 which uh, I mentioned just a minute ago and we have the raid from Kung Fu Panda has now reached the periphery of uh, Hedges' core area. Hedges just repositioning his commander just to deal with this incursion from Kung Fu Panda. And Kung Fu Panda setting upon taking out some build power. He will manage to take out a few engineers before that raiding party is mopped up, but not too much damage done there to Hedges by Kung Fu Panda. Uh, possibly a couple of max be maxes being killed and which did hamper the uh, building of uh, this T1 land factory we have a push in from Cabal in the center going straight through the middle of Foden and Google's position Foden and Google now pushing squeezing together just to push this party of T1 units from Cabal back And Cabal pulling them back and then pushing them south towards Foden. And in the middle for Team 2 at the moment, certainly looking like that uh, Cabal and Death Squad are designating themselves as holding mid, whereas Matthew is going air and then air and then some more air. Matthew with his comm just at the edge of his base perhaps to uh, intercept any pushes that make it through from team one and Cabal looking like he's slightly overextended here as Foden now with a lot more units has wiped out the units of Cabal Google and Olympia pushing in from the top here Foden coming in with his comm and Cabal looks like he's in some serious trouble here he needs to get his skates on and haul ass out of there or he is going to be our first victim and Foden bringing his units in on the calm of Cabal and Cabal well it has to be said helping out Foden there and walking into his units in the cliff and Cabal deep into the red now he's only been pushed by Foden here and Cabal's going to go down 8 minutes 29 seconds Cabal going down completely overpowered and helpless from the forces of Foden. Google also came in over the top position of Cabal's base to take out the remaining spam that Cabal did have. I don't think that would have made any uh, difference really.
Foden well and truly having beaten Cabal there on unit spam. Google just expediating the departure of Cabal and it's a well executed kill by Foden there early on in the game. But Foden now has got his own concerns as he is trying to withdraw after his units have been killed and Death pushes forward with some T1 Jesters and some Mantis. Team 1 severely outnumbered in air right now and Foden looking extremely vulnerable and he may go down to Jesters here. He is down to 3,000 hit points there or thereabouts streams of supporting air units from team two supporting and keeping alive those jesters Foden making some t1 anti-air there but Foden now under 2000 hit points Matthew doing an excellent job of keeping the jesters from their squad alive and Foden now running for his life Matthew sending in t1 bombers just to try and get Foden dead here but Foden does get some T1 anti-air units up and Foden also employing a little bit of dodging there I'm not sure how effective that was but that second that second attempted pass by Matthew with a T1 bomber expertly dodged, dodged. and Foden clinging on at 1100 hit points right now and Matthew streaming T1 bomber after T1 bomber and they're all coming straight in. They're only going to get one pass and there's more expert dodging by Foden. Death now trying to push in with his comm on Foden's position. Foden is too busy having a night on the dance floor it seems. Some more jesters come in from Death Squad. But uh, Foden now regened up to 1500 HP rising quickly. And Foden moving back with his commander into safer area. And uh, it looks like that teams to T1 air spam thinning out here. And Foden will get away here. And Foden now just counter pushing Death Squad's forward push with his commander and Mantis. The Mantis are all dead. Death Squad hanging around and uh, <laughs> Matthew... Coming in to bomb the thams of Foden, but also uh, mistakenly bombing his teammates ACU there. And Death Squad just getting rid of some T1 point defense here as he just stands getting shot in the face by it. Now getting some reclaim in. We've got T1 bombers coming in from Matthew, but now Olympia looking like he's overturned the interceptor deficit for team one and momentarily team one now have air control team two there focusing hard on t1 air units that were designed to finish off foden they didn't get the kill on foden they also had to surrender air control And Google now pushing through the middle of where Cabal's base once was. Google now with some T2 on the field in the form of Ilshivers. Kung Fu Panda now pushing forward with his commander and um, moving a good chunk of his T1 units across the back of his base to intercept the raiding party being sent through the middle by Google. But Google looking like he's turning them southward towards Matthew's base Matthew seeing it quite early and jockeying his commander back along the edge of his base to intercept this push from Google Google completes a T2 upgrade at 12 minutes just under 13 minutes and elsewhere we have Hot Fog and Death Squad's ACUs just exchanging a little bit of fire there Hot Fog trying to get some Oblivion turrets up. Uh, Grinder on Team 2 completing a nano repair upgrade. And Grinder just forward at the moment with some units holding the line for his team. Having to deal with a little bit of uh, 
blaze spam kiting the party from grinder Olympia now parking his interceptors over the base of Matthew. Google's land push made it straight through the middle and is at the back and behind of Matthew's position. But Matthew's ACU looking like it's going to be able to mop up this push from Google without sustaining too much damage. Olympia just moving his interceptors away slightly as... Uh, Matthew does have some anti-air up and well Olympia not doing that actually and just sacrificing interceptors for the sake of killing the newly built interceptors of Matthew I know what Olympia is trying to do here he's trying to maintain air control but by flying over everyone's bases he is in fact surrendering air control because he's giving away so many cheap kills on his interceptors and team two we have a few players on team two making interceptors right now not just matthew but to death and kung fu getting interceptors up grinder contributing a little bit as well so this is really a a team effort from team two to retake air control and Olympia now losing air control as uh, as his last interceptors go down. But we do have some Corsairs being stashed in, in the middle ridge here for Olympia. And Google's earlier push still going strong in the form of these three Ilshivas. Although now being hunted down by Ilshivas from Kung Fu Panda and I'm just taking a, a quick look at the production of Google here and Google having a little bit more production capacity on land than Kung Fu Kung Fu looking quite isolated in the top area for Team 2 right now. And I think Kung Fu needs to be careful because not only is he going to be outbuilt by Google, but Foden also redirecting his efforts towards Matthew to assist Google in uh, clearing this position here. And also Hedges moving forward with his own stuff now. Kung Fu... Perhaps doesn't realize it yet, but things are starting to look pretty dangerous. I'd be moving my com roundabout now, not building T2 power generators, but I guess I can see what's going on. And the Corsairs now. Seven of them starting to menacingly circle. We're up to eight. A ping goes out on Death Squad's com. That would be the best target. Grinder being aggressive with his com now. Moving forward. Looks like he's just moving forward for the reclaim. And oh, Olympia not going for the com of Death Squad. Well, I'm not sure I like that decision. And... Olympia also sending his T1 interceptors into the T1 interceptors of Team 2. Death Squad looks like he's seen what's going on here and he's intercepting the Corsairs. And the Corsairs now going in for a snipe attempt on Matthew. That building, I think it was a T3 power generator, taking away some of the force being projected there. Matthew also quite effective with his dodge. And those Corsairs getting one pass, one pass not enough and Matthew typing Sam's save lives well there's a good slogan personally you definitely got to try and go for Death Squad there I'm also not sure that uh, 8 or 9 Corsairs 
was enough. So, right idea, poor execution from Olympia, in my humble opinion. And will that cost Team One dearly? Back in the north, Google and Foden now penetrating the periphery or the peripheral core area of Kung Fu now, just grinding down these mexes on the outer edge of Kung Fu Panda's base, swinging around the back and now into his power generation, more coming in from the front door, taking out the land factories of Kung Fu and Kung Fu definitely needs to get his ass out of there because his base is is all but destroyed there is absolutely no way he's going to be able to hold this position now and Foden also getting some ill shivers through to the edge of Matthew's base and Matthew employing mass T1 bombers to clear those ill shivers Brinder just uh, belatedly moving his units back in to take care of that but they're already dead and now we more ill shivers from Foden coming across some mantis from death squad grinder shifting his units forward again to intercept more ill shivers and Matthew also taking them out from the air with T1 bombers also bombing <laughs> some of grinders units there But uh, that push on Matthew from Foden, not doing too much damage. I think Fo I think Matthew may have lost one max point. And Death Squad also uh, contributing some energy storage to Kung Fu now, just to maintain the ability to overcharge, I'm sure. And he's going to need some overcharge now as Google's units are just pouring through the north of what used to be Kung Fu's base. Matthew employing the T1 bomber spam now on Google's spam. And that actually looks like it's been quite effective. And Google just completely ignoring the commander of Kung Fu Panda. No longer a threat is Kung Fu and... Google intent on penetrating Matthew's base and Death Squad now pushing north with his commander to intercept the T1 units and Death Squad now his ACU up to 98 kills here 22 kills now for full veterancy on that commander that's a Pretty chunky commander there for a, for a Cybran at the very least anyway. So we have the uh, ACUs of Kung Fu and Death Squad holding the upper position of Matthew's base and Grinder parking his units at the front door of Matthew's base. It looks like it's forming a adequate defense for Team 2 here. And as we can see here, Death Squad now into... Well, well into T3 land in the form of loyalists. So right here, right now, it looks like Death Squad going for quality and Google going for quantity. And Hot Fog here has got some TML up and is trying to snipe the position of death squad I think that attempt was but this TMD here on the edge for grinder just taking care of the TML attempt on what I think was an attempt on the hydrocarbon of death well, he's not he needs a lot more TML if he's uh, gonna get any uh, TML attempts through the uh, edge TMD for Team 2. And Death Squad here making a T1 land factory, giving it to Kung Fu Panda. 
as the units continue to pour in north from Google it looks like they're just holding on the edge here as they build up their numbers grinder now at the front door of Matthews base pushing forward with his units just clearing a little bit of this production capacity that Google's built up taking out one T1 line factory and it looks like he should be able to take out the second to be honest he could probably push up quite well here and, and clear out a few more of these factories as Google is only just starting to divert a few units southward to deal with this push Uh, Matthew well into T3R let's just uh, slow things down a little bit and assess the eco situation now and at 22 minutes Google chop, uh, chopping topping the mass income charts at 128 mass income per tick uh, in second place for team 2 is Death Squad Foden just uh, moving ahead there of Death Squad, taking into second place with an income of 117. Uh, power income also being topped by Google at 4.4k. In second place is Death Squad for Team 2. Uh, Olympia jumping top there with 4.9k. I'm not sure if that's Recain related. It doesn't look like it. So mass income right now looking like team one are in control as three of the top four mass incomes are from team one death squad looking like he's got the only eco that's competing with team one right now but behind to both google and foden in that area and to be honest the gap between death and google is a little a little bit wide I guess let's hop things back up to normal speeds here and T1 bombers continuing to harass the units of Google and Google now employing his own T3 land in the form of sniper bots just harassing the edge of what's being thrown up by Kung Fu Panda Google now also on this ridge here on the right hand side of the map spamming T1 land factories trying to rebuild that capacity taken out by Grinder in the middle and Google pushing forward with spam but Death Squad pushing forward with a very sexy looking squadron of loyalists here absolutely mopping up the T1 spam of Google as you would expect and Olympia starting to move his comeback already as you can see this looks pretty dangerous Google is on a gun speed upgrade looking like he's gonna hang around with his com for a little bit longer uh, but it looks like Death Squad concentrating that loyalist spam now on Foden's position Foden does have T2 land up but still employing no Foden is on full T2 land spam, my apologies. And just moving his com out there, overcharging a couple of loyalists, and then popping back into the safety of his shields. Death Squad are deciding that uh, Foden's got too much up there in defense and pulls back his loyalists. I definitely think that if Death had scouted this middle position that housed the comms of Google and Olympia for a short time, he would have changed his mind and pushed through there far less secure and we have an experimental unit on the field from death squad now in the form of a monkey lord that monkey lord immediately starts to thunder towards the front lines and it looks like that the first order of business for that monkey lord is going to be the base of hot fog Kung Fu now still alive for Team 2 but uh, only in the form of his ACU he has no units his com is full vet right now with 169 kills that's some pretty impressive regen there on that commander 
and just working on taking out the T1 factories of Google that he's got up here. And if we just take a look at the air game right now, Matthew's still in control of air, I would say, with a fair few number of ASF over Olympia. But Olympia also at T3 air, but just a fewer number on the ASF front. Although Olympia does have a good chunk of T1 interceptors still. Death Squad saying in chat, win air. Death Squad obviously feeling that... Uh, the only way that monkey law is going to die anytime soon is to air from team one. A pings going out on the monkey lord now. Hot fog isn't going to die at this point as his commander is safe in the water. But uh, hot fog's base is soon to be deceased as hot fog has nothing to offer in the form of a repellent to this monkey lord. And the monkey lord just nonchalantly walking straight to the middle area of hot fog now and if hot fog doesn't get rid of these t1 engineers well <laughs> i was just about to say it's going to give the a lot of veterancy to the monkey lord but hot fog electing to control k's entire core base there definitely saving a lot of kills for that monkey lord keeping it without veterancy for the time being I don't know whether or not Foden is is going to feel as brave here Foden does control K a lot of his T1 engineers but keeping alive his economy structures at the moment and now the monkey lord going to work on the core area of Foden still nothing from team one in form of a defense for this monkey lord And the HQ of Foden is now down. Foden back to T1 land for the time being. And this monkey lord responsible for the destruction of two bases now continues to march northward. It still hasn't lost a single hit point. Well, it has now. <laughs> and the kills are starting to rise sharply for this monkey lord now. Getting some very tasty kills on T1 power generators that are left alive by Foden. Google moving in some sniper bots and laying down fire on this monkey lord. But it's not going to be anywhere near enough. And the monkey lord now marching forward onto the position of Olympia. Olympia still nothing from Team 1. To deal with this monkey lord there are a few sniper bots around don't get me wrong but that's not nearly going to be enough and oh, olympia was a little bit late there on control king his t1 engineers and that monkey lord on its second level of veterancy quickly approaching its third level of veterancy and olympia now electing to destroy some factories but leaving all of these t1 power generators alive surely he needed to kill everything that the monkey lord just three kills from its third level of veterancy there's no way that it ain't getting there now and if we look over on the right hand side of the map olympia looks like he was in the middle of oh and food has gone down Foding looking like he was in the middle of a attempt of a com drop and going down presumably to some Sams. Death Squad with some with a Sam up here at the back of his base, which looks like it got the kill of the T2 transport that was carrying the commander of Foden. So Foden kind of gifting his life there, perhaps feeling that he needed to be radical and desperate. But Death Squad now with a bug very nearly done. But just look at the spam from Google. It's a tirade of T1 Seraphim and 
despite the fact that Death Squad has at least a dozen, maybe two dozen loyalists up here holding Matthew's position. It looks a little forlorn right now. Google does have some units around the back of Matthew's base. Death Squad pushing the loyalists forward now. But as I was saying, Olympia going for some TML here. It looks like that he wasn't able to finish what he had planned in time as that Monkey Lord came in on Olympia's base, probably taking out his, uh, well, definitely taking out his eco. And now Olympia going for his own com drop, it looks like. Meanwhile, the Monkey Lord on full veterancy, 192 kills with 19,000 hit points left in the bank. And what's Olympia do with his comm now? He's going straight over the base of Matthew. Matthew, he must have seen that Matthew had Sam's up. And Olympia, that was nothing more than a gift of his comm. Probably just wanted to die. And team one here, losing two players to Sam launchers. Matthew saying earlier that Sam launchers save lives. Well, if you're stupid enough, Sam launchers also take lives. Bowden and Olympia definitely in the latter category in this match at least. But the land spam from Google now looking like it's starting to penetrate the defenses of Team 2. As Google is through and into the core structures of Matthew. Trying to take out some... T2 maxes from Matthew. Some fire is being laid down on this T3 power generator. I would seriously be wanting to get that down. Matthew now funneling power into Death Squad. And we have an experimental unit up from Google. A chicken marching forward now to the base area of Death Squad. Is where it's being queued up to. And Matthew at this stage has lost most of his eco, eco. His maxes at least. He's still managing to hold on to this T3 power generator. Which is probably his most prized possession right now. Second to only his ACU. If Matthew can just hold on to this T3 power generator and his T3 HQ, he'll take that as a win. But it doesn't look like it's going to be so as the T3 power generator just about to go up in smoke. It's gone up in smoke. Matthew's base now all but dead. And this chicken marching into the base of Death Squad. Death Squad control king. A large chunk of his stuff. Just to prevent the chicken from vetting too much. The engineers of Death Squad being pinged. I don't know if Death Squad is going to get a control K on them in time. But it doesn't look like the chicken's paying much attention to them at all. As it's firing at the cliff. Now on the T3 power of Death Squad. We do have some broadswords from Grinder on the chicken but the chicken still pretty healthy at 35,000 hit points and it's laying down fire on Grinder's base I gotta say Google is clearly busy elsewhere with micro right now because I would not be concentrating on the stuff that this chicken is going for right now we've got a T3 land HQ up from Death Squad We've got a, a Megalith that's one third done. And we've got all these T3 Maxes of Death Squad as well. I know what I'd be doing. But the chicken now laying down fire on Grinder, And Grinder about to die here to the death. Oh, I don't believe it. <laughs> Interceptors landing from Grinder, Blocking the death cannon 
from the chicken as it was about to kill Grinder. A Grinder surviving on on paper thin hit points now. I've never seen that happen before. That was incredible. About half a dozen ASF there inadvertently landing in the way of the death cannon from the chicken, keeping its master ACU alive, barely. How lucky was that for Team 2? And if we go back to the middle now, it's a complete onslaught of spam from Google. I don't know where that chicken died. It died a hero chicken of the state somewhere up here and hedges surviving but this bug now well i've missed a fair bit of action on this bug it's already up to 273 kills and rising on its third level of veterancy rank and as i was just thinking there is next to no air support that's going to deal with this bug and this bug it looks like it's in the red, but it's got so much vet, it's still actually on 20k HP. And just look at the regen. It's being shot by a good two dozen of, well, it was a good two dozen of T1 anti-air there from Google. But the regen outstripping that of the incoming damage. And this bug looking like it's going to make full veterancy and it's just well right now it, it is saving team two Matthew uh, clumping his ASF just in the lower part of the map here is precious ASF as remember Matthew has no base to his name right now he's currently trying to get some power back up at, right at the bottom of this map and Grinder also elected to hide in the water here. Can't blame him. And this bug now just being brought back to the central area of Death Squad. Just to defend the front line from this T1 land spam. So that bug there 100% saving this match so far for Team 2. And we do have TML snipes coming in from... From Hot Fog, who has rebuilt a base here in his in his old area, and just taking out some, I think it was a T2 power generator. What he took out, Matthew asking for an E dump. It's going to take him forever and a day to finish that T2 power generator. I would have spanned up some T1 myself before attempting the T2. And this bug now over the base of Hot Fog, taking out the rebuilt area of Hot Fog. Definitely Hot Fog employing the use of TML has brought attention upon himself. And the Soul Ripper now, 460 kills and rising. It's health, 50,000 HP and rising, full veterancy. Definitely a hero soul ripper of the master cyber nation. And right now this soul ripper looking like player of the match in itself. Google now has got his spam through to the rebuilt area of Kung Fu Panda. Kung Fu does have some loyalists up which, which were probably given to him by death squad and we have a fat boy now coming in from hedges welcome to the game hedges where have you been all match hedges laying down some suppression fire on these loyalists to support the t1 spam of google but they still got nothing to take out this soul ripper and the soul ripper coming in and going to work on the fat boy the shields are down by the time i finish my sentence we do have ASF now from Google on the Soul Ripper. But Matthew bringing his pr precious prize squadron of ASF just to take out the ASF of Google. And that Soul Ripper 
back to its unimpeded lifestyle of absolutely slaughtering T1 units from Google. Google was able to take down the newly built base from Kung Fu, but Kung Fu, as resilient as ever, retreating slightly with his commander to regroup, using the loyalists to good effect just to thin the numbers of the incoming land spam from Google. And we have a few more ASF being sent towards this Soul Ripper. Matthew not yet re-diverting his own ASF. And it looks like that those ASF from Matthew starting to run out of fuel now. <laughs> but just uh, coming in to clear up a few more. I wouldn't worry too much about the ASF that Google is sending on this Soul Ripper because it's got so much regen right now. It's going to take at least a dozen ASF before it actually starts to get a negative hit point balance going. And the Soul Ripper now into the spam production area of Google. Just clearing out the capacity of Google here. And Google's comm looks pretty safe to the Soul Ripper at least. That Megalith now is being worked on again. Remember the chicken earlier didn't take it out. And it's now over halfway. Death Squad looking like he's rebuilt nicely here. I say that. Actually what's happened is uh, Grinder has given Death Squad his base. So right now those four or five ASF blocking the killing shot on Grinder's ACU looking very fateful at this point. Then again saying that the Soul Ripper would still be here. But I don't think the Soul Ripper, whilst it's saved the game for Team 2, I don't think it's going to win the game for Team 2 because Google now really uh, the only player for Team 1 currently remain remaining a threat and Google's position looking sufficiently fortified to deal with the Soul Ripper. And Google now finishing another chicken. And that Megalith is up. It's lost a third of its life from the damage it sustained while it was being built. But marching forward now, and whilst I do not believe that the Soul Ripper is going to win this match for Team 2, that Megalith definitely, definitely looking like it's probably got the match won right now. The chicken marching forward. I don't know if Google's seen the Megalith yet. It's just been pinged. But chicken versus Megalith, even at 66% uh, health, there's still only one winner in that match. And the Soul Ripper continuing just to parade around the map. And it now focuses on the chicken from Death Squad. The Soul Ripper up to 711 kills. That is absolutely staggering. There are not enough superlatives in the English language to verbalize what that Soul Ripper has done for Team 2 in this match. And it is being guarded fiercely throughout its life by the ASF of Matthew and now Death Squad. Matthew probably reporting that uh, his ASF are slowly running out of fuel now. Nearly half of Matthew's ASF moving very, very slow. So this Soul Ripper just getting the chicken down to half health enough for Google to want to pull it back towards the protection of Google's SAMs uh, but the Megalith now having withdrawn slightly is now marching forward the Soul Ripper going over to the left hand side of the map just to clear out the reconstruction of Hot Fog's base for a third time 
just to make sure that uh, whilst Hot Fog is still alive and in no immediate danger of dying with his ACU in the water, just making sure that he remains as irrelevant as possible. And now the Megalith opening up on the chicken, the chicken being moved forward, and we've got the sexy micro here from the Megalith from Death Squad as it just shuffles its way backwards while still pointing forward. Matthew typing in team chat, shh, don't spook hot fog. What does he mean by that comment? Well, we do have some torpedo bombers coming out from Matthew as we speak. So it looks like Matthew are lining up a torpedo bomber snipe attempt on Hot Fog's ACU. And Google, Google's gone down. I'm not sure whether that was just a concession from Google. As it didn't look like the Megalith was forward enough to take out the ACU. Which is why I wasn't watching it too much. And... Team 2, I don't know whether to say they've pulled this one out of the bag or whether to say that 4 ASF blocking a death cannon have saved this match in a bizarre and miracle-like turn of events. But nevertheless, Team 2 now, there's only one winner of this match and that Megalith is just going to march its way forward without opposition hedges has been completely non-existent through most of this match he does have a fat boy up but oh, he also has a nuke let's just hop into the view of hedges right now have we got any scouting going on here <laughs> hot fog dying to the torpedo bombers there from Matthew uh, and although Hedge is nearly at the point where he's got a nuke he has not done any scouting and to be honest the only way that that nuke's going to be any use is if he takes out the ACU of Death Squad he does not know where the ACU of Death Squad is and the Megalith now approaching the area of Hedge's final position. The Soul Ripper has decided it just needs to take a short break. It's been a busy day for the Soul Ripper, racking up just shy of 800 kills. If anyone has ever seen a more effective Soul Ripper, I want the replay. And as I predicted, the Soul Ripper perhaps not winning the match outright for Team 2. But it's uh, it's definitely saved it for Team 2. Without that Soul Ripper, the land spam from Google surely would have been just too much. And now the Fat Boy and the Megalith just exchanging fire here. The Fat Boy losing its own shields but still under the shield protection. And Hedge's base... Now that shield has gone down. A couple more volleys. And this fat boy will be no more. The nuke's gone out from Hedges. There ain't no way that Death Squad's going to die to that. The nuke going into the kind of central area between Death Squad original core position and the original core position of Grinder, which was then transferred to Death. And not really taking out a whole lot with that nuke. Very poorly placed nuke there. And now the Megalith accompanied by a Monkey Lord. Just for a little bit of overkill here in the last stretches of the game. Hedges bringing his ACU forward with second shield upgrade. But you couldn't tell because it just evaporated as does the hit points on Hedges' com. And team two there. Half grinding the victory, half a miracle survival of Grinder handing them the victory. But very well played nevertheless. An excellent 
uh, use of a Soul Ripper there. Definitely player of the match in this Soul Ripper. <laughs> I'm not giving it to a player, I'm giving it to a unit. And let's go ahead and take a look at the stuffs. So, Death Squad getting two kills. Foden, the only member of Team 1 to achieve a kill. And that was the uh, the kill of Grinder. Uh, not Grinder, I apologize. Cabal. And also, if we remember, Team 2 have only got two kills crewed here. But Team 1 losing two members in a transport. A little bit silly. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit funny. Taking a look at the categories now. And Google winning mass income and stuff built. Death Squad getting kills. That is an insane number of kills there. 2,000 kills, ladies and gentlemen. Nearly half of those kills coming from a single unit. Just think about that for a second. And finally, Hedges winning the power income in terms of player of the match it's a tough decision actually because um, I really do feel that Grinder surviving enabled Death Squad to remain in this game in the latter stages because Grinder transferring his base over to Death Squad I'm going to give it to Death Squad but Google played exceptionally well as did Death Squad but uh, that Soul Ripper was just was just immense. So well done, Team 2. Well done, Death. And thank you, guys, for watching. I hope you enjoyed the replay. If you did enjoy the replay, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Please support the channel as much as you can. And guys, take care. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.